So this is the Dove Creek Fill. When constructing a railroad, you really had two ways of manufacturing the grade. You either cut or you fill. And so this is the second largest fill on the Transcontinental Railroad in Utah. And this is located just above the Dove Creek sinks, hence why we call it the Dove Creek Fill. We estimate that the height of this was about 60 feet tall from the bottom of the gulch to the top, and then about 200 feet long, and at its base we estimate it to be at least 150 feet wide. Most of the soil for its construction was just dug out of the hillside, like what's right in front of me. All this work was done by horse, pick, shovel, and human power. And so this was a large natural obstacle that the railroad crews had to confront while constructing the railroad up here in March and April of 1869. It's estimated that several hundred, maybe up to 500 Chinese workers and several hundred Irish and other European American Teamsters collaborated on this construction of probably about a month's worth of work. So I'm holding a fire brick. A fire brick was made from special types of clay found in the central United States and California and was used for its high alumina content. What that does for a brick is it allows it to withstand high temperatures. And so fire brick was oftentimes used in steam boilers, smelters, and the fireboxes of steam engines. So the brick that you see as you travel the road was dumped here by maintenance crews for almost a hundred years as a means of stabilizing the ballast. But why did they even have this much brick? Well, this brick I'm holding, this was inside the firebox of a steam engine, and you can see how they nest together. So you can see, imagine the inside of a big steam engine with this brick lining, and in there is all the fire, all that coal being burned at a high temperature. Well, over time, that coal being fired actually leaves a lot of residue. And you have to manually go in with a big steel bar and scrape it off. Otherwise, the firebox does not fire at peak efficiency. So you lose compression, you lose some energy. Well, while you're doing that, sometimes you actually get a lot of waste being ripped out and sometimes failed bricks. These are failed fire bricks. Coal is not a pure substance. As you burn coal, there's a lot of waste material that's mixed into the coal that gets built up, mixes with other material that maybe was in the tender, and so you get this buildup of almost lava-like rock on the outside of the fire brick. Well, this loses the capacity of the steam engine to fire, and so this is a great cross-section of that addition between the brick and the coal clinker. So, on the inside of that firebox, because coal fires at such a high temperature, it turns its material and all the partic particles floating around inside the firebox into almost glass. And so you see this very highly, what we call, vitrified material, and then if you flip it over, you'll actually see that it adhered to all the fire brick inside the firebox and made them fail.